was just the easiest thing to just do this instead of waking up, waiting for the baby to cry, getting out of bed, walking out of bed, sitting next to the baby, nursing the baby sitting up. By that time you're fully awake, the baby too, stressed out, partner probably too, and then they fall asleep again, you put the baby down, they will probably wake up because they got put down. So you do the whole thing again. Then you very gently put them down, maybe they will not wake up, you sneak bed into bed, and then you're awake. And then the whole thing starts all over again. Hi, welcome to Breastfeeding with Sarah. I'm Sarah, your lactation consultant. Breastfeeding at night is a big topic that many people are trying to find solutions for. There's a lot of misunderstandings about what's a safe sleeping environment for a baby. In this video, we will explore strategies to make a safer sleeping environment to bed share with your breastfed baby. We'll even have a family show us their bed setup and their night cam footage of how they make bed sharing work for them. And we'll look at recommendations from the Academy of Breastfeeding Medicine and also look at research that shows the unique biological connection that happens when mothers and babies breast sleep. Come join us. Many parents find themselves not wanting to bed share because there are messages out there that it is harmful to baby. This unfortunately sometimes leads to parents getting up in the night to feed their baby on the couch or recliner to avoid bringing the baby in bed with them, and then they end up falling asleep there, and that is actually one of the most unsafe sleeping situations one can put a baby into. This is part of the problem as many infant deaths correlated with co-sleeping deaths occur because it is on an unsafe sleep surface. So let's take a look at the Academy of Breastfeeding Medicine's protocol on how to reduce the risk for your baby with bed sharing. The Academy of Breastfeeding Medicine's protocol number six, revision 2019 on bed sharing and breastfeeding states that bed sharing promotes breastfeeding initiation, duration, and exclusivity. Medical and public health organizations in some countries recommend against bed sharing, citing concerns over increased risk of sleep-related infant death. However, bed sharing may only be a risk in hazardous circumstances as demonstrated by epidemiological study. Overall, the research conducted to date on bed sharing and breastfeeding indicates that nighttime proximity facilitates breastfeeding duration and exclusivity. Discussions about safe bed sharing should be incorporated into guidelines for pregnancy and postnatal care. Existing evidence does not support the conclusion that bed sharing among breastfeeding infants, as in breast sleeping, causes sudden infant death syndrome in the absence of known hazards. Accidental suffocation death is extremely rare among bed sharing breastfeeding infants in the absence of hazardous circumstances and must be weighed against the consequences of separate sleep. There are consequences to breastfeeding with separate sleep, even with room sharing, that includes the risk of early weaning, the risk of compromise to milk supply from less frequent nighttime breastfeeding, and unintended bed sharing. Parent-infant bed sharing with breastfeeding constitutes the human evolutionary norm as demonstrated in anthropological research. This is one of the reasons why nighttime breastfeeding is so important. Interruption of the rhythm of breastfeeding at night risks lowering maternal milk supply. Here's how one mom shows how she explains this concept to her partner. Honey, the nighttime is a time when the prolactin, which is the hormone that makes the milk in my boobs, is at the highest. So to make sure that I maintain a healthy milk supply and to make sure to maintain the communication with the baby system and my lactation system, it is essential that we nurse at night. You know, and this, you, this, is, this is a great example for, I have a feeling of like, I don't wanna sleep without my baby and I'm gonna wake up anyway when he is waking up. Whereas when we're sleeping together, I don't even need to wake up. I, you know, like fully. The work of James McKenna and Lee Gettler introduced the concept of breast sleeping, in which they show the role and behavior of breastfeeding when bed sharing, not only supporting the optimal development of milk supply, but also inherently providing biological and physiological protective mechanisms for the baby. The Safe Sleep 7 is a guide to help make bed sharing safer for your baby. These include, number one, no smoking in the home or outside. Number two, sober adults, no alcohol, no drowsy medications. Number three, breastfeeding day and night. Number four, healthy baby who is full term. Number five, baby on back and face up. Number six, no sweat, baby in light clothing, no swaddling. Number seven, safe surface, 
No soft mattresses, no extra pillows, no toys, no tight or heavy covers, clear of strings and cords, gaps firmly filled, use rolled towels or baby blankets. So bed sharing is not considered a safer sleeping environment for your baby if not all of the safe sleep seven criteria are met. If any of the known hazards are present for you or your baby, do not bed share. Come on a home visit with me and see a family's bed sharing setup and how they make nighttime breastfeeding work for them. I was positive I was not going to ever sleep with my baby. I thought, why would people even want to do that? I mean, it just seems like you would be feel so unsafe doing it and they belong in their best night. They need to sleep alone. You know, they need this, you need this independence. You need to put them to bed so you can have your time, you know, with your partner. All these things, and then as soon as I gave birth to him, everything changed immediately. When I brought him home, there was a shift happening. I started feeling this intense pull to have him with me. I needed him with me. I didn't, I didn't want to put him in his bassinet. I would put him in his bassinet and he would cry for me. And then slowly I started um, bringing him in our bed early in the morning and breastfeeding him instead of sitting in the rocking chair. And every time I would do that, he would just drift off to sleep so peacefully and just sleep next to me and he would wake up happy. And I started noticing that and noticing how it made me feel. And I was like, there, I feel like there's, this has to be right. There has to be something to this. Maybe, maybe he could be with me more often. So I ended up reaching out to a friend who I know was co-sleeping or bed sharing with her baby. And she sent me some resources and this whole new world unfurled for me that I had no idea existed. I had no idea that other mothers felt the same way, that they wanted their babies close, that they I had no idea that he needed me close too. And I was a little nervous bringing it up to my husband to joke about what he might think because he felt he was receiving the same information as I was about baby sleeping in a bath and baby sleeping in a crib. Um, but I kind of showed him some research, I came with my points, and immediately he was like, yes, absolutely. This seems like the most natural thing. Mm -hmm. He wants to be with you. Um, why are we spending two hours every night trying to get him to go back in his bassinet? He doesn't want to go in his bassinet. There's a biological reason for that. It just makes sense. It makes sense, and why is he waking up so much? He just feels unsafe. You know, he doesn't, he needs us. So that was really important to me that if I was going to sleep with him that I was going to do it as safely as possible because at first I was very nervous about it. I had seen so many videos or read so many things about bad things happening which now that I'm a little bit more educated I do know that a lot of the SIDS cases they attribute to accidental co-sleeping, falling asleep on a couch, a sofa, falling asleep in a chair which I don't think is a fair representation of how it really can be and how it really is with a lot of moms and babies. Mm -hmm. um, we follow the Safe Sleep 7. You want a really, really firm mattress um, for baby to sleep on so baby doesn't roll into you, it's not too soft. If they do end up on their tummies, that, that they don't sink in. So I got the firmest one adult mattress um, that you can find. With that, I got, it's a coconut pad that goes underneath it, so I didn't have to do a bed frame that would make the bed even taller. The coconut pad adds for airflow to keep any uh, the mattress from molding at all. And then underneath that, there's a non-slip mattress pad to keep it from moving, so once you have it in one place, you really can't move it. It's, it's just stuck there, so there's no risk of it moving where you don't want it to. Between the bed and the wall, I have a stiff piece of foam here um to prevent any kind of entrapment and then the bed like i said is not movable so it stays that way stays right up against the wall if i didn't have this foam here ideally you'd want a bed in the middle of a room or at least i think at least a foot away from each surface in case baby rolls so they don't get stuck or anything then for myself i have one pillow that i keep under my head keep away from him and then I have one pillow that I put behind my back for support so that if I need it, I can kind of lean my elbow on it. So if my hip gets a little bit sore for him, he doesn't sleep with a blanket. He sleeps in a sleep sack like this. This is his little wearable blanket. <laughs> they keep him warm. His arms are out. Um, and then if it's really cold too, which it has been for myself, I also have one like this so that I don't need 
feel like I'm gonna pull the blanket up. I don't have that inclination at night to pull it to my neck or my shoulders because I'm already warm because I have my own kind of like wearable sleeping bag. So we wear matching ones. And then I do like naturally, it feels natural to me to have a blanket at all times. So I do like to have one. So I have a muslin, little 100% cotton breathable one. It's like very sheer, very breathable. And I pull that up to my waist so it kind of covers my feet. I usually wear thick socks too, but I'll pull it up to my waist and it stays there. I've never even like thought about, I've never like woken up and I had pulled it or up or anything. You're very aware of your sleep even if you don't think you are. There's straps to keep the sheet really taut because um, if it bunches up, it could be like an airway blocker for baby. So we keep uh, straps to keep the fitted sheet even as tight as possible. We lay in the middle of the bed, so if there was any rolling or anything, he's really far from the edges. I think as he gets older and more mobile, I'll probably put something soft on each side just in case. But we're still really low to the ground, so it feels really safe. I have on my side here, I keep the nightstand far away from the bed, and the, but I do have like a diaper caddy that I keep in case I need it with little odds and ends, diapers, wipes, burp towels. And then over there too, I have my red lamp that I keep on that I can control from my phone. So you can dim it to really, really dim. That's usually what I do. So if I open my eyes at any point, I can see him, see his mouth, see his airways, just make myself more reassured. And then I keep a camera there and that one um, dad has a monitor too so just so he can keep an eye on us when so he's in the other room and then I keep the camera here and that one is really high def and just right above where we sleep so that I can review just for my own you know safety comfort and thoughts I can review and see how we're sleeping it's motion activated so I can kind of see if we were stirring at all and that's how I found out that he was nursing by himself at night <laughs> So I lay on my side and I bring my knees up with a pillow between them and I keep one arm above him stretched out with the pillow tucked behind my head here so it's pretty far away from him. But I keep one arm above him so if he were to move at all there's something between him and the pillow or the wall. And I sleep on my side, knees up in like a C position. He sleeps in that C position. Sometimes on his back, sometimes on his side if he's eating. Um, and he doesn't move from that position and neither do I. It's just really instinctual. I stay there to protect him and he stays there because his food's there and I'm there and he's warm. Yeah, once you have all the protective measures in place, you just spend more time with your baby, sleeping with your baby, you do it more often. Now I just leave a breast out for him and he eats. And I usually will kind of wake up when he's like, if I want to help him latch and then I fall asleep, I wake up later and he, we're both sleeping. He's resting peacefully next to me and I kind of open my eyes, check on him and I go back to sleep. Um, I was thinking I was latching him every single time. And I remember bringing it up to my husband recently. I said, he's not really eating at night anymore. I'm like, kind of worried he's not really eating at night. I reviewed some footage and I saw that he latched himself he had his hands on the breast and ate, and I slept through it. And I thought it was the most precious, <laughs> beautiful thing. He was totally safe. I wasn't, you know, it, it, in his way at all. And he ate and then just fell back asleep, and stayed in the same spot he was. So he was actually eating. Like that to me says yeah. how natural it is to sleep with them. We're just so in tune like, to each other. If like you guys have done it for this long and then all of a sudden now he's just like, reaching over and just doing it on his own, you're both still sleeping, mm -hmm. that's wild. That's, yeah. I feel like it's because it's naturally, that's what it really is supposed to happen. And as time has gone on and we've gotten more comfortable, I've gotten so much more rest, so much more. Mm -hmm. It's still a light sleep because in the best way, you're, you're responsive, you're protective. I think that comes when you have a baby, it's just so natural. But now I'm like, I haven't taken a nap during the day and I don't know how long. I don't need one. Like, we're fine, you know, he's fine, I'm fine, he sleeps. When people ask me how he sleeps, I wish I could explain to them, like, the nuances of his sleep. He'll sleep for 11 hours, but he, and it's a beautiful, restful sleep next to me, but he eats the whole time. So why is there such a disconnect between the mainstream messaging on infant sleep and what many parents are feeling is right for them? 
To answer that, let's look again at the Academy of Breastfeeding and Medicine's research where they give the historical perspective for this change. In industrialized countries until the 20th century, most infants were bed sharing and breastfeeding. After that time, solitary sleep developed as an ideal among the middle classes, reinforced by growing trends of artificial feeding and medicalization of childbirth, separating infants from mothers. Sleep training also became increasingly popular in some industrialized societies. Human milk substitutes help this trend, as infants who receive them tend to feed less frequently and may sleep more deeply than breastfed infants. Concerns about infant sleep duration and location did not appear until after the late 19th and early 20th centuries in industrialized countries, indicating that infant sleep research has taken place within a historical context in which feeding of human milk substitutes and solitary sleep promotion were normative. Although parents and caregivers in the majority of cultures sleep in proximity to their infants, organizations in some countries, including the United States, Canada, and Germany, recommend that even breastfeeding mothers should never share a sleep service with their infants. However, given the body of research and putting it into context, the Academy of Breastfeeding and Medicine makes recommendations for those providing care for breastfeeding families. Conversations when a family is bed sharing should be non-judgmental and acknowledge context. Ending stigma around bed sharing and educating all parents about safe bed sharing have the potential to reduce infant deaths. Bed sharing evolved from innate human biological and behavioral mechanisms. See below for a link to the handouts and please share this video with other families so they can learn the safe sleep guidelines of bed sharing. Subscribe to get notifications when I put out more videos that will be supporting breastfeeding. And consider supporting this channel on Patreon. A monthly donation or even a one-time donation to Patreon will help bring these videos to more people. Thank you for watching.